Hey guys, Anthony here with a video to show you some examples of the Morph animation in EBC 3.0. I've created a separate tutorial to show you how to use the Morph animation, so in this tutorial I'm not going to cover those basics. In fact, I'm creating this tutorial on request from one of my subscribers. Hey Tom! Specifically, he wanted to know how I created this Morph animation which morphs from the text to this embossed image and into this colored image. I will also show you the setup for this morph animation, which morphs from the flying eagle to this text. Pretty cool, eh? And finally, I'll show you this example of text morphing into a video like so. Essentially, you can morph any element on the canvas. Okay, so now let's head over to EBC 3.0. So first, let me show you this basic example of text morphing into this SVG image, like so. So let me open the timeline, and then drop down these two elements. As you can see, this is the text box, and I've applied a sketch by hand animation, and then a fade out. And this one down below is the clock, and I've applied the morph animation. Also notice this bar on the timeline for the clock has been placed just when the text fades out. So if we preview the scene again, you can see that the text sketches, and as it fades out, it morphs into the clock. Now if I click on the clock element in the timeline, and I go to the effects tab, you will see all the elements that are on the canvas. And as you can see, there are two elements. That's the text, and this is the SVG image. And this is where you choose where a particular element morphs from. Currently, as you can see, it's morphing from the text. So now let's take a look at the second example. And this one's a little more complex and has three elements on the canvas. You basically have the text that morphs into the embossed image, like so. And then the embossed image morphs into the full colored image. So if I open the timeline, and we take a look at the individual elements, you can see that I have a text box, to which I've applied the sketch by hand animation, and then a fade out. And then I have the embossed image that morphs from the text, and then moves to the left, and then finally, the colored image that morphs from the embossed image. Now just watch how I place the bars for each element on the timeline. So essentially here, the text sketches, and then as it fades out, this one right here, I placed the embossed image right here. And then finally, as the embossed image moves to the left, right here, I've placed the colored image. Now, if you look in the effects tab, let me just hide the timeline. You will notice that the colored image basically morphs from the embossed image. And I've basically changed the default to morph from the embossed image. And as you can see here, this is the one. And it's highlighted with a red rectangle. Also, if I open the canvas, you will notice that if I click on the embossed image, it has got an animation point right here. So that basically moves it from the center to the left. So let me just close the canvas and do a quick preview. So as you can see, the text catches, and then it morphs into the embossed image and then the embossed image moves to the left, and then morphs into the colored image. Alright, so now let's check the other example of the flying eagle morphing into text. So let me once again open the timeline, and drop these two elements. As you can see on the timeline, there are two elements. The eagle, or the flying eagle, is the GIF image. And you will notice that I've applied only a fade out. As the eagle fades out, the text morphs from the eagle. 
So right here, as you can see, this is where it fades out. And then I placed the text right there. And if I open the canvas, you will again notice that I've applied, let me just hide the timeline. You will notice that I've applied several animation points right here. So one, two, three. So the, the eagle GIF basically starts off from outside the canvas and then comes in to these animation points that I've applied. And you will notice that I placed the text just about where the eagle GIF ends. So if I open the timeline once again, you will notice that right about here, you will see that I placed a text box right where the eagle fades out. So this is the fade out, and I placed a text box right about there. Okay, so let me just close the canvas, and let's do a quick preview. So as you can see, the eagle comes in, and then it morphs into this text. Pretty cool, eh? And finally, let's check the last example, where I have the text that morphs from a video. As you can see right here, I've got some text, and then it basically morphs into a video. And this one is pretty much similar to the first example I showed you, except that here the text morphs into a video. So if I unhide the timeline, again you will notice that there are two elements. This one right here essentially is the text. As the text goes up, I've placed the video that morphs from the text. And if I go to the Effects tab for that second element, you will notice that it, it morphs from the text right here. You may have also noticed that in some examples I had a video background, and the video background was added in the Scene tab right about here in this section. Well, hope this tutorial helps you better understand the morph animation in EVC 3.0. Let me know if you've got any questions, and thanks for watching.